Ahoy hoy, I'm Planet Walk, and recently I've been going through some of the Flat Earthers that I haven't responded into a while to see if they're still doing anything. And one of those Flat Earthers is a Flat Earther by the name of Stinky Cash. Now this is a Flat Earther that I remember pretty much nothing about, except for the fact that he has a weird name. Anyway, the video that we're going to be looking at today is one which they claim that three-year-olds are being brainwashed with the globe or something. Let's take a look. Today I was having a conversation with a really good friend of mine on, on Instagram. She shared a photo of her son celebrating his birthday in preschool today. And the photo has him sitting on a chair holding a globe. And in the background there's a globe and then there's another image of a globe. There's probably a million globes in this classroom. Well, yes, there are going to be globes there because it's a useful way to teach kids about the world. That's part of what they do in preschool. They teach kids stuff. Look, I get that you failed preschool, so you missed the point of it, but it does actually have a point. So I comment on her Instagram story. Is that a globe, LOL? And she writes back, yeah, they sing a song for your birthday and the kids bring the globe around the sun. And I respond, oh my God, that is total programming. And she writes back, why? It's the show, every time the Earth makes one whole orbit around the sun, you turn another year old. <laughs> and she is right. Every year that you've been alive is another trip that you have made around the sun. It's not programming to teach kids basic things about how the universe works. It's just a part of education. I know that you don't like that, but as a kid grows up, there's certain things that they learn in order to get a full education and to get a better understanding of the world. For example, I remember when I was probably about 11, I learned about atoms and how there are a whole lot of protons and neutrons in the center surrounded by electrons. Now, there are people out there that disagree that that is what an atom is and think that it's just brainwashing. So should that not be taught in schools? Of course it should be taught in schools because it's a crucial part for understanding science. The same goes for the globe. I'm like, yes, I get that. But the Earth doesn't actually move. The Earth is stationary. Nobody has ever experienced the Earth in motion. Nobody would ever conclude on their own that the Earth is in motion. You have to be told the Earth is in motion at a young age by preschool teachers who use fun toys and games. It's 100% programming. Okay, you get told a lot of things about how the world works that you would never come to that conclusion on your own. You have to be told. For example, CDs and DVDs, or in this case, I suppose, a Blu-ray. I would not conclude on my own that there are a whole lot of tiny little lines and dots on these things that store information. Instead, I was told, hey, this is how CDs work. I've never looked at a CD under a microscope. I've seen pictures of it, but I don't know that those pictures are real because, again, I've never looked under the microscope. The same goes for white blood cells. I wouldn't come to the conclusion on my own that white blood cells are what help me fight off infections. The reason that these are things that we all know is because we were told it. Now, this does not mean that you can't later go ahead and check to see if something is correct. You can do that. And that's why we still accept these things, because no one has shown it to be incorrect. The same goes for the Earth spinning. And what do you get when you test that? But what we found is, is when we turned on that gyroscope, we found that we were picking up a drift. A 15 degree per hour drift. Thanks, Bob. So I sent her a screenshot of this from Google, where I Googled, how fast does the Earth orbit the sun? And, and now their answer says 67,000 miles per hour. It didn't always say that. But they did keep the 18 and a half miles per second down here. The problem is 18 and a half miles per second does not actually equal 67,000 miles per hour. If you multiply 18 and a half miles per second times 60 to get miles per minute, and then multiply that again by 60 to get miles per hour, it's 66,600 miles per hour. They hid their 666 in the numbers. Okay, this Flat Earther is actually making a really good argument here for why you should pay attention in school. You see, I was taught in school the concept of significant figures. You know, if you have 
two significant figures, then everything after the first two digits will be a zero. Now, if you take the number 66,600 and convert it to two significant figures, because the six is closer to a seven than it is to a zero, you get the number 67,000. This is what they've done. Why they've done it could be for a number of things. I mean, some people do get uncomfortable at the number 666 and would rather avoid it. The same goes for the number 13 sometimes. There are plenty of hotels out there that have no room 13 because they think that it's an unlucky number. There's also the fact that 67,000 is a lot easier to say than 66,600. 18.5 times 60 times 60 equals what? I was hoping she would do the math and see the 66,600 miles per hour for herself and be blown away by the 666 hidden in their math. You know, flat earthers trying to get other people to do maths is quite ironic. I have been trying to get flat earthers to do maths for years, but none of them will do it. You know, when someone says, oh look at the numbers, they have this number in it, which means this, they start sounding like a crazy person. I don't know if she ever decided to do that math, because she never responded to this message. And she almost always responds to everything I say to her. I feel very sorry for her. I've known people like this guy and they can be quite difficult at times. So then later on, like several hours later, I'm almost, what is this? Like 10 hours later, I write, please don't sleep on what I've said to you. I'm dead ass serious about this stuff. It's your time now. You and Joe are more than ready. Have you thought that maybe she doesn't want to get in an argument with you because she has better things to do with her time? She is pretty awake. My friend, she's, you know, they're, they're right wing, they're conservative, they believe in chemtrails, they, um, you know, they didn't vaccinate their children, they didn't get the COVID vaccine, they completely, you know, they didn't fall for the pandemic, they have a garden, they have chickens, they have goats, you know, they try to be self-sufficient, like, they're really, really good people, and they see a lot of truth. Okay, it doesn't sound like they have the best grasp on reality, especially when it comes to the anti-vax nonsense and the chemtrail stuff. I can understand trying to be self-sufficient, but that doesn't mean that you can't believe in nonsense. But you also have to consider that a lot of these people that believe in conspiracy theories like chemtrails and stuff like that, they don't have a lot of friends. And the reason for this is because a lot of people aren't willing to put up with their nonsense. So, of course, if there's someone who mostly agrees with them, they don't want to start a fight. But for some reason, when I bring up Flat Earth, they just can't digest it. They just go silent. It's the only thing they ignore me about. My two friends, they're a married couple with two children. One of the reasons that could be is because flat earthers do make conspiracy theorists look bad. It's the most debunked conspiracy theory out there. There is a conspiracy theorist that I used to know, and when I brought up flat earth to them, their response would be, that is crazy. No one would believe that. It's been debunked, hasn't it? And the answer is yes, but so has a lot of the same things that you believe in. So yeah, conspiracy theorists often view flat earthers as being crazy. They can sometimes also think that Flat Earthers are part of a PSYOP as well. So this photo of my friend's son is just one of the most Orwellian photos I've ever seen. And yet to a normal person, to a globey, it's just normal. They don't see anything wrong with it. Holding a globe is literally 1984, guys. Having a proper education is literally Animal Farm. This is how they indoctrinate children from a very young age. You don't think they're... They're doing it. Look how they do it. With songs and toys and games and, and linking it to your birthday and trips around the sun. Well, a good way to educate children is to make it fun. I remember being taught about the periodic table and the water cycle using songs. The water cycle round and round. The vapor goes up and the rain comes down. Was I being indoctrinated by that? No, I was just being taught how the world works. But the ironic thing is that the one thing that I would argue is indoctrination, he would probably disagree with, and that is Bible studies for kids. I remember getting these books that were very colorful, filled with butterflies, bunnies, and flowers that would tell us that you can get to heaven if you just believe in Jesus. Now the difference between being taught that a particular religion is true versus being taught that the earth is a globe 
is that one of those two things is useful for other things. You see, if you want to go into something like surveying, engineering, or even into the Navy, you have to know that the earth is a globe to do those things. Whereas when it comes to believing a particular religion, the only thing that really involves that is becoming a priest or a preacher. Now you might argue, what about scholars of religion? Well, in that instance, you would only need to know about the religions, not believe in the religions to do that. In which case you can be taught about a particular religion in the same way that you're taught about myths and legends. You're told about them, but you're not told that they are true. Anyway, that was a bit of a tangent. Let's get back to what Stinky Cash was saying. Guys, we have to protect these children from the lies. We're never gonna break free. We're never gonna defeat the enemy unless we protect our children from the lies. We have to raise the next generation in truth. And we need to protect them from all the poisons of the world. I think you're being a little bit overdramatic there, Stinky Cash. You're wanting to protect them from knowing that Earth is a globe. Something that Earth is. You know that when a baby's born, the first thing they want to do is inject it with a shot of vitamin K. Toxic. Then they want to give it a shot for hepatitis B. Toxic. Then they want to circumcise the baby. Toxic. So I hadn't heard about vitamin K shots until now, but they actually seem like a good idea. They help protect your kid. If you do not give a newborn a vitamin K shot, because they are low in vitamin K, they're 81 times more likely to develop serious bleeding. As for getting your kid vaccinated, yeah, you should also do that because it protects your kid from illnesses that could be very dangerous for them. When it comes to things like measles, it's not a joke. In fact, I believe measles has been making a comeback because people aren't getting vaccinated against it. As for circumcision, I do not believe that it is toxic. However, I do not agree with it unless it is medically necessary. So that's something that we can agree on, finally. Me and Stinky Cash can be like best pals now. Then they want to continue vaccinations and medications and sex change operations and puberty blockers. What? Where did that come from? No one is forcing sex change operations on children. Certain operations like mastectomies, for example, can be performed at younger ages like 16, but generally they try not to do that and try to put it off until they're at least 18. It's only in cases of extreme gender dysphoria do they do it earlier than the age of 18. And also, puberty blockers are given to kids with either precocious puberty or gender dysphoria. Not to everyone! Me thinks you've been smoking a little bit too much of the Tucker Carlson. Put it down for a second, please. We have to protect the children, guys. They're the future. I know that's kind of cliche, but imagine a future where all these children are just brainwashed zombies because we didn't do what was necessary to protect them from the lies. Look, I know that you're imagining if we just do this, then we'll have a future that's better than what we have now. But if you get your way, that's not going to be the future that we'll end up in. The future that you would get is one where technological progress has stalled and people would be dying from preventable diseases. There would probably also be a lot of other bad things that would happen as a result. Flat Earthers tend not to be the kindest groups of people out there. All right, guys. I'm sorry this got dark. It got dark? That's a light way of putting it. It got bloody unhinged is what it got. I was just expecting this to be about Flat Earth, not about all the conspiracy theories. It is funny though that a lot of the people that say the exact same things that he is saying want to distance themselves as much as they can from Flat Earthers because they recognise how silly and ridiculous Flat Earth is. It's just a shame that you've got a lot of people who don't realise that Flat Earthers agree with them on almost everything except for the shape of the Earth. Anyway, the rest of the video is just him saying to like and subscribe, so do the same if you like this video. As always, a big shout out to my $20 or more patrons, Hugh Jars, MC Nutkin, Mori, Nathaniel Muller, Vermont1777, Tony C, Rosina Keller, Wolfie, Kid Vicious, Sarge Campbell, definitely not NASA, Craig D'Amelio, Richard M. Chapman, and Saint. If you want to support me financially, you can do so on Patreon. There should be a link over there. But anyway, I will see you in the next video. Between you and me, thank you for watching.